Little Miss Greedy by Roger Hargreaves. Little Miss Greedy certainly was. What? Greedy, I'll say. As greedy as a giant, and giants are really very greedy indeed. Little Miss Greedy lived in Cherry Cake Cottage. One lovely summer morning, a Monday, Little Miss Greedy awoke earlier than usual. She felt rather hungry, and so she went into her kitchen and cooked herself some breakfast. Some breakfast indeed! Sausages! Mm -hmm. Now, if you had sausages for breakfast, or if I had sausages for breakfast, how many sausages would we have? One? Perhaps two? Maybe three? Guess how many sausages Little Miss Greedy had for breakfast. Sixty-six. Go on, count them. Sixty-six succulent, sizzling sausages, which is difficult to say, and even more difficult to eat. Unless you're Little Miss Greedy. Little Miss Greedy cut the last sausage on her plate in two and popped one half into her mouth. Mmm, she sighed contentedly. That was nice, she thought to herself. Now what else shall I have? Guess what? Toast! Now if you had toast for breakfast, or if I had toast for breakfast, how many slices would we have? Perhaps two? Maybe three? Guess how many slices of toast little Miss Greedy had for breakfast? Twenty-three! Twenty-three thick, tasty slices of tempting toast and marmalade. Just as Little Miss Greedy was licking the last crumb of the 23rd slice of toast from her lips, there was a knock at the door of Cherry Cake Cottage. It was the postman. Letter for you, Little Miss Greedy, he said cheerfully. Oh, good, smiled Little Miss Greedy, for she liked it when someone sent her a letter. Would you like to have a cup of tea while you're here? She asked. I'm going to have one. One indeed. Just look at the size of Little Miss Greedy's teapot. The postman had one cup of tea and a chat, thanked Little Miss Greedy and left. Little Miss Greedy poured herself another cup, another after the 11 other cups she'd already had, and opened her letter. It was from her cousin, Mr. Greedy. Dear Little Miss Greedy, he had written. He always wrote to his cousin this way. Next Wednesday is my birthday. Please come to tea at four o'clock. Little Miss Greedy was delighted. She hadn't seen her cousin for quite some time. Wednesday was a lovely day. After a little light lunch, I'll tell you what later, little Miss Greedy set off in her car to drive to Mr. Greedy's house. But before she set off, she put something on the back seat of her car. Something large. Mr. Greedy's birthday present. At four o'clock precisely, little Miss Greedy pulled up in front of Mr. Greedy's roly-poly sort of a house. Mr. Greedy was there to meet her. Hello, little Miss Greedy, he smiled. How lovely to see you after all this time. Happy birthday, laughed little Miss Greedy, and she gave Mr. Greedy a big kiss. Mr. Greedy blushed. Do come in, he said. Tea's all ready. Little Miss Greedy was following Mr. Greedy into his house when she remembered something. 
You know what it was, don't you? That's right, Mr. Greedy's birthday present. Wait a minute, she said. Can you help me to lift something out of the back of my car, please? She smiled. It's rather heavy, she added. Certainly, agreed Mr. Greedy. There, on the back seat of little Miss Greedy's car, was the biggest birthday cake you've ever seen in all your life. A huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal currant cake with thick pink icing on top and strawberry jam in the middle. I only put one candle on it, explained little Miss Greedy as they carried it to the house, because I've forgotten how old you are. Oh, you shouldn't have, laughed Mr. Greedy. He licked his lips. But I'm glad you did. I baked it today, <laughs> said little Miss Greedy. And then she chuckled. I have a confession to make, she said. This isn't the only cake I baked today. The first one looked so delicious. I ate it for breakfast. <laughs> She chuckled again. And the second one looked so delicious, she went on. I ate that one for my lunch. Mr. Greedy grinned from ear to ear. Time for tea, little Miss Greedy, he said. <laughs> <laughs>